because person who lives a solitary life and tends to avoid other people. Now, if I was to ask you to close your eyes and think of a recluse, someone who intentionally avoid others, what would you come up with? Maybe a middle-aged man living off the grid in the middle of the forest. Maybe a monk on a saffron robe high up in the monasteries in the Himalayas. But a Canadian teenager, or any teenager in that matter, I bet you didn't thought of that image. Unfortunately, studies have shown in the past decades, teens are lonelier than ever. Unbelievable, right? I wish I could say I'm surprised. But as a teenager myself, living in the midst of it, I get it. Now, there's many reasons that contribute to rise in teens' loneliness and isolation. And one of the factors is, not surprisingly, our technology. Designed with connection in mind, teens can instead retreat themselves into a virtual world filled with social media and remote interaction. I have noticed how much time my friends will spend on their phones when we're together. Many of them will be by themselves in school. Well, some of them just wouldn't be interested in any kind of conversations. I realized that they're missing something, something we learned to do from a young age. But by the time we're teenagers, we somehow forgot or neglected, which is socialization. Socialization isn't an inborn skill. It's something that we're taught. By the time when we're young, our parents propose us to say hello whenever we see our relatives, friends, neighbors. Then we're older, we go to school, and our teacher helps us to make friends. But by the time we're teenagers, you will think we know how to make friends now, right? No, not really. When I just came to Canada six years ago, I didn't have any friends. Sure, I had acquaintances. I had people who I know at a service level at school, people who I can talk to. But I never socialized outside of school. Now looking back, I was pretty lonely. Until one day, I went to English class after school. And there, I met a friend who changed my life. Even though we didn't contact for a few years, one day, she asked in WeChat group, who want to go to a movie? I couldn't remember what movie it is, but it must have been a really good one. So I took a chance, a leap of faith, if you will. I said, yes. The movie turned into a regular weekend outing. From three friends to five, it has been three years, and we still go out every Saturday. In taking that chance, by saying yes, I was able to build friendship, find connection, and have a sense of belonging. I had so many amazing experiences. I have tried so many interesting new things, like karaoke. Look, I am a horrible singer. The ground shakes when I sing. But my friends laughed along with me when I built out my favorite Chinese cartoon theme song. They also taught me how to play mahjong and hit the arcade and the go-kart track. They even managed to get me, who barely go out, out of town with a friend before, to go to a trip by ferry to Nanaimo. And for this winter break, we already booked a trip to Yellowknife to see the Northern Lights. My friends, they have changed who I was as a person. They have taught me how to be more kind and patient. 
We positively influence each other by pushing each other out of our comfort zone. I even managed to get a buddy of mine who is not the biggest fan of working out to go to the gym for some strength training. We came together when one of us is facing trouble. And of course, we help us on homeworks and projects. And these experiences is why I've been thinking about the real benefits of making friends, the real benefits of socialization. Sure, it's nice to have someone to discuss the best part of a movie, listen to the off-key scene, and have a, an adventure with. But socialization does have benefits that are longer lasting. Firstly, and maybe the greatest benefit of all, is that socialization allow you to learn how to act in front of a variety of different people. Yes, we know teens nowadays do realize that many of them are socially awkward. And by isolating ourselves, we're really going to struggle when we interact with people in the real world. And that is why learning how to get along with people, even if it looks easy, is a skill that each of us need to practice. Which leads to my second point, relationship building. The more people we connect with, the more we can gain and the more we can give. When we be friends with teens, we can connect with shared experiences. And when we get to know adults, we can learn in a wide range of perspectives. Socializing gives you more learning opportunities than we can ever imagine. And then, perhaps, the most important benefit is that socialization supports our health. It has been proven that supportive relationships from family, schools, and peers can contribute our emotional well-being and our higher self-esteem, while other studies have shown that socially active teens are healthier than their more isolated peers in key areas like weight, blood pressure, stress hormone levels. Teens nowadays are facing a whole lot of trouble from bullying, body image issues, academic and career challenges, relationship worries, stress, anxieties, and a lot more. And in all these cases, having someone who could understand you, someone who you can talk to, someone who could be your ally, may even save you from these troubling conditions later on. So at the end of the day, socialization isn't just about going to a movie or having fun. It's about learning how to get along with a variety of different people. It's about learning invaluable life skills that will benefit you for life. It's about avoiding loneliness and isolation that will lead to more problems later on. And that is why we encourage all teenagers to socialize. So the next time your friend asks you, do, do you want to go to a movie? When well, you can be chilling in your pajamas or playing video games. Say yes, go for it. Go see that movie. Learn mahjong, sing at the KTV confidently. Put yourself out there because you'll never know if you're like me and find the best group of friends that anyone could ever ask for. Thank you. <laughs>